So on the previous video, we ended up working on the front side of this worksheet. Um, that's where we had the A value of one. And you simply thought, what times was your C value? That if you add together is your B value. I always say make a list of the multiples of the C value. And then you could add them and see which one gives you B. But that's what we did yesterday. We also did uh, a little bit of uh, pulling out the GCF first and then continue factoring on the inside. We also did a little bit of factoring by grouping. So hopefully you guys took the time to practice the rest of these questions on the front side. And all the solutions are posted on Google Classroom. I also have uh, a video explaining some of these questions. So if you want, check that out on Google Classroom. Let's go to the back side. On the back side, uh, we're going to practice factoring quadratic trinomials when A is not 1. Okay, so let's take a look at number 31 right here. The A value is 6, not 1. So we're going to do that multi-step process. Step 1 is to multiply A times C, and we're going to get 6 times negative 4. A is 6, C is negative 4. You're going to get negative 24 as an answer. And then step 2 is to make a list of multiples. So let's make a list. I always say uh, start with the number 1. Um, so 1 times what will give you the negative 24. 1 times negative 24. 2 times negative 12 will give you uh, negative 24. Uh, 3 times negative 8 gives you a negative 24. 4 times negative 6 gives you a, a negative 24. 5 doesn't work. Once you get to 6, you're already at back to 6 times 4, which you already have 4 times 6 here. So these are all the 4 possible multiplication problems that give you negative 24 besides changing signs. So all you do now is simply add the numbers on your list and see which pair of numbers gives you the middle value, which in this case is B, which in this case is positive 5. All right, so let's add negative 24 plus 1. That would give you a negative 23. That's not a negative 23. It's a positive 5. When you add negative 12 and positive 2, that gives you a negative 10. Negative 10, that middle value is not negative 10, it's positive 5. When I add negative 8 plus 3, that's a negative 5. Well, this is not negative 5, but it is a positive 5, which means I have the right number, just the wrong sign, which means these are the right numbers, they just have the wrong signs. So change both signs. Let me repeat this, that I've mentioned this many times. You can't just change one uh, number. You have to change the sign of both numbers. So that becomes a minus 3, that becomes a plus 8. What do we do next? We move on to step three of that multi-step process. And step three is to set up, set up AX, AX. <clears throat> okay, those are the notes for you. Set up AX, AX. Now, what would AX actually be? Well, A is a six and you put an X on it, six X. And then what do we do with these blank spots? How do we fill them in? We fill them in with a pair of numbers from step two, the minus three and the plus eight. So you put that minus 3 right there and the plus 8 right there. So that's our third step of the 4. And the fourth step, if you don't remember, is to simply divide. Divide by what? By whatever you can, the greatest value that is. So when you look at this first parenthesis, the 6 and the 3, they're both divisible by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and of course it has an x. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so it's a 2x minus 1. The second binomial, you can't divide both of them by 3, but you can divide both of them by 2. And if you think about that binomial divided by 2, 6x divided by 2 is 3x, and then 8 divided by 2 is positive 4. And ladies and gentlemen, we are done. That is the multi-step process to factor a quadratic trinomial when your A value is not 1. Now, if you're like, I'm not sure if I did this right, then you could go ahead and distribute 2x times 3x. You get the 6x squared, distribute, 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 combine like terms in the middle, and it should give you that quadratic trinomial that you started with. So uh, that's what we're practicing back here on these following eight questions. Is there another one you'd like to see, 32 through 38? Anybody? Pick one. So let's try 36. Once again, we're going to write our steps. Step one is to multiply A times C, which A is 2, C is negative 12, so that's a negative 24. There you go. Step two, make a list 
of multiples of negative 24. So you're going to go 1 times negative 24, 2 times negative 12, 3 times negative 8, 4 times negative 6. 5 doesn't work. That's all there is, those four possible options. Now, which of these four options, when you add them, will... Yeah, there you go. So if you were to add the one positive 1 plus a negative 24, that will give you a negative 23, and that's exactly the B value, negative 23, bless you. So that is the pair of numbers that we want for step two. Moving on to step three. <clears throat> What's step three? It's the setup. How do we set it up? We set up parenthesis AX, parenthesis AX, okay? These are just notes for you guys, so you'll know how to do it. So let's actually set it up. What is my AX? My A is two, put an X on it. So you put AX, AX, right? AX is two X, two X and two X. Take the numbers from step two, put them right in there. The positive one right there, the negative 24 right there. So positive one right there, negative 24 right there. Yep. So it would be x minus 12. Fourth step is to divide. And like you said, the first one, we cannot divide. You just leave it. Or you could say I'm dividing by one, but it's still the same thing. doesn't change. The second one, you could divide by two. Two divided by two is one x. And, uh, or actually, 2x divided by 2 is a single x. And negative 24 divided by 2 is negative 12. And that is your answer. Okay. So we have, I think, six more questions for you guys to practice. And that should get you a lot better at factoring quadratic trinomials when your a value is not 1. Again, the solutions are posted um, on Google Classroom. And they are very detailed, like I actually write down step one, A times C, step two, list the multiples, I write my list, step three, set up this, AX, AX. So I, I write all this on the solutions, so please uh, use it to check your answers. And we're also making these videos, yeah. So down here, it says solve by applying the zero product property, okay? So obviously to apply the zero product property, you need the answer to be zero. So uh, number 39, it doesn't say, I mean, not your answer to be zero, but you need the equation to be everything on one side and on the right side just have equal to zero. So what we're gonna do is subtract the 54 and subtract the 54. So our new equation is x squared minus 15x minus 54 equals zero. And right here we have a quadratic trinomial with no number in the front. That means that we could set this up, parenthesis, 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 x, x, thinking what times what is our c value, negative 54, that if I combine together is my b value of negative 15. I always say, make a list. How could I get negative 54? 1 times negative 54. 2 times uh, negative 27. 3 times, I don't think that works. Does it? No, it does. 18, I think. Negative 18? 18, yeah. Okay, it does work. Yeah, with the calculator, just go 54, uh, 54 divided by 3, and it'll give you the 18. If we try 4, it's not going to work. If we try 5, it's not going to work. 6, it does work. 6 times negative 9 gives you negative 54. So when we add these, when we add these, negative 54 plus 1 is negative 53. That's not a negative 53. When I add these, negative 25 plus 2, I mean negative 27 plus 2 is negative 25, that's not negative 25. Right here, negative 18 plus 3, that is negative 15. This is the pair of numbers that we want. Some of us see the 9 and the 6 and they think, oh, 9 plus 6 is 15, I want to pick these. Wrong. Why is that wrong? Because this is a negative 9 and a positive 6. If you added those together, that would give you a negative 3. That's definitely not a negative 3. But up here, this does work. Positive 3 added with negative 18 is the negative 15 that we have in the middle. So that's the correct pair of numbers that we want. We plug that in. We have a positive 3 and a negative 18. Now, this is still equal to 0. It's still an equation equal to 0. All we did was factor this quadratic trinomial to become a binomial times a binomial. Now, why do we want a binomial times a binomial? Because when you have something times something equaling 0, then the first something could be zero, or the second something could also be zero, okay? So you split them into two simple one-step equations. Sometimes they'll be two-step. And you solve both of them, subtract three, subtract three, 
So x equals negative 3 is one answer. Add 18, add 18. Uh, x equals positive 18 is the other answer. Do you get it? Yeah, it's the same as factoring quadratic trinomials when your a value is not 1, right? It's a quadratic trinomial, a value is not 1. The only difference is once you factor it, you split them and set them each equal to 0 to solve. Yeah. Now, on this worksheet, I believe all of them are quadratic trinomials. So on all of them, you will end up with a binomial times a binomial that you're able to split. However, on the actual practice test and on the actual test, I remember some of them being something like this. Let me just make this up. 2x to the second minus, let's say, uh, 14x equals 0. That's an equation. I want you to solve it. It is equal to 0. How would I do this? Well, I need a factor to get multiplication to be able to split it and solve with zero product property. So what, how could I factor the left side of this equation? Everything's already on one side. GCF is what I want to do. So what could I pull out of there? 2 and an x, perfect. And 2x times what would get me back to a 2x squared? X. Just a regular x, okay? And then 2x times what would get me back to a negative 14x? A negative 7. Great. So it's still equal to 0. All we did was factor out the GCF of 2x. So why do I want something times something equals 0? Because zero product property says that if you do have something times something equals 0, then the first something, the 2x, that could be set equal to 0. And or the second something, x minus 7, that could also be set equal to 0. And these are both one-step equations. So you could solve both of them very easily. The first one really says 2 times x equals 0. So the way to get rid of multiplication is division, divide by 2. And we do to one side, do to the other, divide by 2. Cancels out. You're going to end up with x equaling 0 divided by 2. 0 divided by anything is still 0. And the other one, plus 7, plus 7, you're going to end up with x equals positive 7. So on your quizzes assignment, uh, you're going to have to type in x equals 0, comma, x equals 7. Could you put x equals 7, comma, x equals 0? Yeah, on all of these uh, that you have two answers or two factored form, like a binomial times a binomial, the order should not matter. As long as you have both of those, uh, it should be marked correct. Okay? So with that said... Um, I would recommend practicing the last week's practice test to get you ready for tomorrow's retake test and also finishing this worksheet. Is there another one you'd like to see or should we just let you guys work on it? All right. Okay, let's work then.